Hi everybody, my name is Kai Lai. I am a postdoc researcher at NC State University. Today, the topic I'm going to present is a life cycle modeling framework for dynamic energy and the water footprints of agriculture systems. Agriculture plays a critical role in our development, but at the same time has large impacts on the environment. Agriculture sector is one of the largest greenhouse gas emission sources and one of the major nutrient pollution sources due to activities like fertilizer use. As we need more and more food, this problem can be more severe. How to solve it? We can have all kinds of different policies, strategies, or regulations. But how can we know what impacts these policies have on our agriculture system? So understanding the mitigation potential of these policies on our environment and identifying the key factors driving the results is crucial, especially for the large scale agriculture system. So we build a model to tell us the information. First, as we need to know the environmental impacts to meet this requirement, life cycle analysis can be used. LCA is like a county system that can tell you the environmental impacts of a product throughout its life cycle so that we can know the impacts of the farming each year for each farm. A lot of studies have used LCA to investigate the environmental impacts of a crop farming and the reduction potential of uh, different operation techniques and agricultural policies, but they are more on a static basis and do not commonly consider the dynamic nature of agriculture systems. At the same time, there are large individual variabilities and uncertainties in foreign decision making process, like a crop selection. To address the methodology barriers of the traditional LCA framework, Agent-based modeling, ABM, is introduced as a simulation tool to model the dynamic systems where each farm can be viewed as an agent. Agents can automatically and adaptively make their own decisions according to three things, their own attributes, interacting information with the other agents, and the interacting information with the model environment. Let's look at what happened inside of the agent. As I mentioned, the agent can make decisions based on three things. Attributes, interacting information with other agents and the interacting information with the model environment. Then an agent can, makes, uh, can make its own decision and send out any information. The behavior rule here is assigned or set by the users themselves. In one review paper in 2017, three types of LCABM cooperating modes were identified. The first two are commonly used in the current stage. In our study, we choose the third one, coupling LCABM. It means that the two modules will send the information to each other. Again, the LCA module will provide environmental impacts for us and the ABM module can provide individual information in a dynamic way. In this study, we model a crop cultivation case with 1,000 farms for future 30 years. Each year, each farm can choose one of the six common crops. The right figure here shows the farm size and the location we used in this model. This is assumed at current stage, but it can be further modified if there are any related data. This is our framework. It contains two main modules, the ABM module and the LCM module. Before decision-making, ABM module will send the crop candidates information to LCM module and then LCM module will determine the potential environmental impacts of each crop candidate, then send it back to ABM. In the decision-making process, the agent will use all the information to determine which crop to cultivate. After the decision-making, the final decision of each farm 
are sent to LCA module to evaluate the final environmental impacts of the decision. Then the ABM module and LCA module will output their results respectively. In the ABM module, three main attributes are used here. Profitability, familiarity, and the environmental awareness, EA. The forecasting profitability is forecasted by each farm based on the forecasting yield cost and selling price. The familiarity with one certain crop is dependent on the crop choice in the neighborhood circle in last year. In the information sharing circle, yeah, every farm can know what others are growing. If more farms choose one crop last year, then this year the agent will have higher possibility to choose this type. In other words, familiarity is based on how many other farms are growing the crop in the information interacting circle last year. The environmental awareness is describing the correlation to environmental benign behaviors. In this study, we assume higher environmental awareness will lead to higher possibility of uh, environmental benign behaviors, including choosing crop with lower impacts and reduced chemical usage. At the same time, from the literature, we know that training and education can increase the uh, EA. In order to consider the uncertainty of this process, we use the stochastic approach in the decision-making process. In the LCA module, the LCI data of uh, six crops are collected from uh, eco-event database. The system boundary we choose was a cradle to gate, storage and uh, transportation for crop selling are excluded. To account for the impact information for farmers, we use the primary energy consumption, water footprints, eutrophication, and the GWP as indicators. To calculate the GWP and the eutrophication, we use the TRIC 2.0 by US EPA. A scenario analysis was designed to understand the results sensitivity to those parameters that are considered as critical. We designed four different scenarios here. In scenario one, we assume the value of the EA is ranging from zero to five and uh, the following normal distribution, which is based on the survey data from the literature. We assume that uh, three different levels of the environmental awareness di distributions, which is the low EA, median EA, and the high EA. And the comparison baseline is no EA. In this scenario, here we show the accumulated results from year 15 to year 30, compared with the baseline, which does not consider the EA. The results show that higher environmental awareness show significant reduction in GWP, eutrophication, energy consumption, and the water footprints. And if we look at the profit, the baseline has the highest profit. The profit loss when considering EA is caused by the reason that a EA may shift the overall system decision from high profit, high impact crops to low profit, low impact crops. And uh, we can see that a high awareness will relieve the profit loss. As we increase the EA level, the loss can be compensated by reducing the chemical usage cost. As EA is important, how to efficiently increase the bioeducation intervention can be a question. Imagine there is a large scale system where we cannot reach everyone to do the education intervention. Scenario two was designed to understand this situation where the, uh, how we can address the effectiveness of targeting different subgroups of farms for education intervention. 
Five different targeting strategies are designed here. First, we can target randomly. Second, targeting on higher EA, lower EA, or targeting on larger farms or smaller farms. The accumulated results of 30 years shown that targeting on the group with larger farm size works the best in reducing the overall impacts and the profit loss. If we don't know the farm size information, randomly targeting the subgroup works better than targeting at the EA values. The scenario three was uh, con conducted to investigate the impacts of information sharing. Each year, the familiarity will be determined by the other agent inside the information sharing circle. The readers can influence the final results. In this scenario, we'll compare different circle readers 20, 30, 40 miles with the baseline 10 miles. The results show significant difference in profit while the other result categories are relatively small. So in this case, I only show the profit here. As we can see here, with larger information sharing circle, the accumulated profit of the system goes up. In other words, in this model, expanding the information sharing circle will help prevent the profit loss. After seeing the importance of the accessing the uh, environmental impacts information for the farm, we designed the scenario four, where simulating the time delay in information access. We want to get the information from a website, database, government, NGOs. It can produce some information delays. In this scenario, we compared zero year, one year, two year, and three years with a baseline, no information access. If we look at the results, the baseline here means no information access. First, providing the information access or say guaranteeing this existence of the information access can reduce the environmental impacts. Second, in our model, providing the immediate information access to farmers or say zero year delay will lead to 15 percentage to 84 percentage more reduction than three years delay if we compare the two ones here. In across all four environmental indicators in the first 10 years. To summarize, we built an integrated LCA-ABM model and applied it to a large-scale agriculture system simulation for future 30 years. Based on the simulation results, the conclusions are derived here. First, enhancing Farmers EA can relieve the environmental burdens and profit loss. Second, targeting large farms for educational interventions would be a better choice. When farm size information is not available, targeting randomly is not a bad idea. Third, enhancing the information sharing between farms and uh, guaranteeing the necessary environmental information or decision-making support tools is important. Finally, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you.